Hello friends and welcome back to another week of virtual story time with Miss Liz. Today we are combining politics with one of my favorite subjects, animals. Today's book is First Pooch, The Obama's Pick a Pet. It's written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Amy Bates and it's published by Marshall Cavendish Publishers. Let's see what's going to happen in this story. So you may have heard about the Obama family and before our current president, Obama, Barack Obama was our president. And this is a story about his family and their first pet at the White House. Here we go. First pooch, the Obamas pick a pet. Presidents make plenty of promises. Here are a bunch of pictures of many different presidents across time. Our first president, George Washington. Some of you may know Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, and Bill Clinton. And here is Barack Obama. Calvin Coolidge promised to put a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. John F. Kennedy promised that we would land a man on the moon. And when Barack Obama threw his hat in the ring to become the 44th president, he promised his daughters a puppy. I think that's a pretty nice promise for his family, isn't it? So here is Barack Obama, and here is his wife, Michelle, and those are their two daughters. Heaven knows, Malia and Sasha had been begging to get a dog for months. Throughout the 22-month-long campaign, they never once stopped wishing for a dog. They wore curls and party dresses to join their parents on stage before crowds of thousands of people. And they put up with Secret Service agents always on their heels. So the Secret Service are a special group of people whose job it is to keep them safe. So here in this picture, there is Barack Obama and Michelle, and there is Malia and Sasha, and they have to attend all of these events with their parents. Well, most of them. And it probably wasn't very easy to keep up with that busy schedule going all around the country. Here they are walking past someone else's dog. Look how excited they are. I think they're thinking they can't wait to have a puppy of their own. They obeyed their grandmother while mommy and daddy were on the campaign trail. They followed their parents' busy travel schedule, even though that made their heads spin. They figured it was worth it if they finally got their dog. When the votes were counted on election night, the sisters felt as if they had won too. Malia and Sasha will get their new puppy, said their dad in his victory speech. They're thinking, oh, cool. They had waited and worked really hard alongside their parents for a long time, and I think they deserve to get a little bit of fun now. Now the whole family had decisions to make. Daddy had to choose people to work with him in the White House. Mommy had to choose a new school for the girls because they moved to Washington, D.C. And Malia and Sasha had to decorate their new bedrooms. And they had to choose their dog. Here they are looking through books and at pictures of all different kinds of dogs. And it looks like there's even doggy pictures hanging on the wall. They are going a little dog crazy. President George Washington had one of his foxhounds in this painting. President Bill Clinton has a picture with his dog, Buddy. Franklin Roosevelt had a dog named Fala. Oh, I skipped some of the words. <laughs> it would not be easy. The whole nation tried to guess which breed would wind up in the Oval Office. Would the first daughters choose a foxhound like President Washington? Or a chocolate lab like President Bill Clinton, so that was Buddy, the chocolate lab. Or would the girls take the lead from Presidents Franklin Roosevelt and George Bush and settle on a Scottish Terrier? They're really fuzzy. 
Oh, looks like um, George Bush's Scottish Terrier was named Barney. And he also owned one named Miss Beasley. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What if Malia and Sasha chose a foreign breed? An English Bulldog, a Peruvian Hairless Dog, or a German Shepherd? Would the American people think they were unpatriotic? Hmm, I don't think so. I think all dogs deserve to be loved. Look how cute they all are. After all, the first dog had important duties. Meeting the presidential helicopter, fetching the presidential slippers, negotiating treats, <laughs> greeting heads of state, and guarding the rose garden against invasion. No time for catnaps in the Lincoln bedroom. Hmm. Sasha and Malia's parents preferred a shelter dog. A lot of shelter dogs are mutts like me, the president-elect told the press. So here are some dogs that were in the shelter. Look at all these pups. See, you don't have to buy a dog. You can find one that needs a home. That's how I got my dogs, by the way. Strays across the country perked up their ears and resumes poured in from first pooch wannabes. But Malia had an allergy. Oh, that ruled out some breeds. Collie, Commodore, and Lhasa Apso, to name a few. For weeks, the family looked into breeds that would not trigger sneezes, from French poodles to Labradoodles, but the president nixed a yappy or a girly dog. Hmm. The family finally settled on the Portuguese water dog. Then, talk turned to a name. Would it be Frank or Moose? All bad, said the first lady. The press hounded the president about when the pet would arrive. That's top secret, he said. Oh, but a pet seems to be arriving now. Hi, Chili. I think he heard we were reading about dogs today. So here are Malia and Sasha. <laughs> looks like they're making a dog house that looks like a mini version of the White House. That's pretty cool. The wait ended on Easter morning. The first photo of the first dog, which was a gift from Senator and Mrs. Edward Kennedy, made the news. Malia and Sasha plucked a name right from their family tree. Their cousin's cat was named Bo. Also, their late grandfather, Fraser Robinson, was known as Diddley, a nickname borrowed from Chicago bluesman Bo Diddley. So Bo it was. And here's Bo, the Portuguese water dog. Looks so cute. Now the first lady had a garden helper. The president had a running mate. Molly and Sasha had a new best friend. And pets everywhere have a voice in the White House. Woof, woof. Look how happy they are. Nothing like getting a new member of the family. Dogs are pretty amazing, I can say that for sure. At the end of the book, here is more information about other White House pets, and it lists a bunch of interesting facts about previous pets that have lived alongside the presidents and their families in the White House. But as for our story friends, that is the end. Again, that was First Pooch, The Obama's Pick a Pet by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Amy Bates. And you know I will be seeing you again tomorrow for more great books. Thanks for watching.